This is the Thank You Ocean Report. Today, a brief story about a subject we've been hearing a lot about. It's referred to as the sea star wasting syndrome. I want to be very careful here. The name is a common name. I mean, it describes a series of symptoms. We call it sea star wasting, but it doesn't describe disease. It describes a series of symptoms. Dr. Peter Romandi is a professor in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology at the University of California at Santa Cruz. In this case, it's the result of typically a secondary infection that is often bacterial, causing there to be damage to the tissue. And this damage, while being species-specific, can include a breakdown of the sea star's tissue. The sea star can actually disintegrate, and in some species, the arms can separate from the main body. We've learned that this syndrome has occurred before, in 1983 and 84, and again in 97 and 98. But according to Dr. Ramondi, these events were related to elevated temperatures in the ocean associated with El Nino. The big difference here is that we don't have warm water and it goes all the way from California up through Alaska. So we're kind of in an unknown territory because our previous link, warm water, just isn't present now. So scientists are looking at various approaches to determine the possible cause or causes for this sea star wasting syndrome. One is, what's the direct cause? We're pretty convinced it's a pathogen. Pathogen means either a bacteria, parasite, or virus. We're very close to figuring out what that is. And then what typically is happening is that there's a pathogen that compromises the animal, and that we think a secondary infection causes most of the damage. And there are a couple of possible explanations for that. One is that the pathogen might be exotic, and the animals have not been exposed to it before. Or it might be a local pathogen, only found in this region, but for some reason has become much more fatal. The real key issue is how long this lasts for in terms of the effects on the other species and the ecological community at large. We just don't know. For perspective, the effects of the 1983 event lasted for a decade. But at this point, it is not known how long this event might last. Dr. Ramondi says that the contributions of citizen scientists are helping researchers learn more about the sea star wasting syndrome. What we're looking at is a phenomenon that's pretty straightforward to detect. That means that the training doesn't have to be extensive. And there's a lot of access to these areas, you know, not so much subtitle, you know, for scuba diving, but with respect to tide pooling. And there are many people who love tide pooling, and Dr. Ramondi says his colleagues are getting reports frequently from areas they've not been able to observe yet. So he says these citizen scientists have collected a huge amount of very valuable information. Now, another question has to do with the potential impact of sea star wasting in marine protected areas. Researchers are examining how the sea star wasting syndrome might affect current and future monitoring of marine protected areas. One of the things that we've been trying to do with our surveys is to get ahead of it so that we can actually determine what the loss is of sea stars in these MPA areas and then hopefully use that to account for the variability that we see down the road in parameters that we measure in these areas. In areas where there's been a massive loss of sea stars, if the community responded in a particular way that we can account for. This research is a coast-wide effort from British Columbia to Baja California, aimed at tracking the extent of the syndrome and its impacts on sea star and urchin populations. Much of this work is being done in NOAA's West Coast National Marine Sanctuaries, and sanctuary scientists are playing an integral role in surveys, sampling, and research. And these surveys in marine protected areas are being supported in part by the Ocean Protection Council through the MPA baseline monitoring programs. And regarding this syndrome, some people have been concerned about the potential for radiation coming from the Fukushima nuclear reactors. We do not think that this is linked to Fukushima or radiation. In fact, we're pretty confident that we know what the cause of it is, what the pathogen is, and the pathogen is an ordinary pathogen. We don't know whether it's an exotic one or not, but it's an ordinary pathogen, and I think that people should not be concerned with respect to sea star wasting and the link to radiation from Fukushima. And my thanks to Dr. Peter Ramondi. If you're curious about sea stars and other rocky intertidal creatures, here's your Thank You Ocean Everyday Action. Please practice tide pool etiquette when visiting tide pools. Watch where you step, look closely, and touch gently. I'm Jerry Kay.